Graham, this is the official opening day of the Nimbin Festival. You've been working on it for a while, so how do you feel? Overloaded. <laughs> so much chaos going on. Um, it's not really the... Oh, I suppose it is. It begin, begins today. This, the, this is the 10 days of May we've been talking about for so long. But the festival, um, the spirit of it's certainly been going on for some time. Are you at all worried about the, the headlines in the newspapers implying that there's going to be it's sort of, it's going to become a disaster area. I'm worried about the sort of mentality that writes those stories and what they've got to fear from the festival and why they want to put it down in such a savage way. How did the festival start? Um, well, it's an Aquarius festival which every two years the Australian Union of Students um, holds. The, cultural found, uh, the Aquarius Foundation is just the, the cultural arm of the Australian Union of Students and this is their, their big event every two years. Oh, now, the last one was in Canberra and it was um, a good festival but they had lots of bad points so really it was a student attempt to get some alternative or some sort of equivalent to rather, student equivalent to the Adelaide Arts Festival with performances and audiences and all these sorts of things um, and there are lots of things happened about it um, that oh, started us thinking that perhaps there was another way of having a festival. Uh, we thought, first thought well perhaps students wanted rock festivals uh, but then it was quite obvious that rock festivals had been killed um, by the entrepreneurs. Um, so we thought, OK, let's have a survival festival. Let's, you know, leave it as unstructured as possible so people can come along to the festival they'd want. Um, and by redefining it um, and, and saying that, that culture is not about performances and not about consuming works of art and, and skilled performances, but culture is about living, uh, you know, the idea that your life is your prime work of art. Um, the result has been to open the festival to, you know, whole new fields. Um, for example, the architects have plotted, well, you know, here's a community. Um, let's put up the structures. Let's, let's play around and see what we can do with them. Uh, so the architect students have been working on building things. Uh, Bill Lucas is down there building a solar heat system for a shower, for example. Um, the, the alternative healing people have come along saying, well, acupuncture is a service we'd like to get into. This is what we can offer the festival. The learning exchange has been set up down there and it's been run by educationalists saying, well, schools don't work in the society. Uh, here's a community we can experiment with a different form of, um, you know, learning and knowledge exchange. So, as I said, it's not about music, it's not about culture in the same way the Adelaide Arts Festival is. Um, it's about being in a community, it's about lifestyles. So, if the festival succeeds, what do you think it will have proved? I don't know how to judge the success of the festival um, in this sense. Uh, because the festival is so many things, there's so many different people. Um, if we have, in the sense, if it works in such a way that we don't pollute the creek, uh, we don't have major out outbreaks of diseases, we don't have fights and those sorts of things. If it comes together, the community, which, which, the, which is the feeling in the town right now, it's really soft and gentle. And you go down and sit at someone's campfire and talk to them, they're very open, sort of thing. And that's what it's about, you know, that we can do things without having to have entrepreneurs to tell us how to do it. We don't have to have barbed wire um, at the gates. Um, we don't have to have policemen um, ordering our affairs. There are policemen here, and we regulate our affairs without them. Um, resorting to violence or the threat of violence, um, then that's beginning. It's sort of a statement in itself that, that you know, society could be restructured and it could, could work in a completely different way. And of course that's a sign of hope, because given the, the nature of the um, disasters that face mankind, um, ecologically and um, through such an incredible violence implied by, you know, factory owners poisoning the air and water um, and people like Nixon sending 
B-52s as the Christmas present to Hanoi, um, that, that sort of out of control technology, then if you can get together in large numbers at 5,000 and exist you know, with gentleness and love, and it works, well, Christ, that's, <laughs> that's a sign that we may well survive the century um, when we're surrounded in gloom.